Hare Krishna. A very, very warm welcome to all of you. Welcome back to our weekly Bhagavad Gita reading sessions. And today we are going to read and continue from where we left in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. And before we do that, we will do a quick recap of what we learned till now um, and we'll cover all the acronyms. Yeah. Great. Very happy to see all of you. And uh, let's do a quick recap of the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Who can tell me what is the acronym of the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita? Doubt. Doubt. Very, nice. First. Very nice. Great. George, so what, can you tell me what does D stand for? D is for uh, Duryodhana and Dhritarashtra. 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 Yes. yes. And and what is there in that? What does uh, Dhritarashtra and Duryodhana say or share? Uh, this Content. is uh, where uh, it start. The chapter one starts uh, where uh, uh, Dhrushtra asks Sanjaya what's happening in uh, in the battlefield. Yes, perfect. And what does Duryodhan do then? Yeah, in there, yeah, he boasts uh, about his army. Hmm. Hmm. He boasts about his army and he encourages everyone to support grandfather Bishma. 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 Yes, very good. Very good. What is the next letter of the acronym doubt? Oh, oh, who can explain me? Oh. Yes, Mitali. Oh, it's for I can. Oh, okay. See, yes. everyone, everyone's okay, Maria, shy Maria, yes, tonight. go ahead. Go ahead, Maria. <laughs> everyone's shy tonight. What's happening? <laughs> uh, o is for ominous sounds. So they start to blow their um, cautious. I don't remember the word. Conch. Conch. All right. Um, from both sides. And this is how they are building the atmosphere there for a fight. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's the conch. Which George is showing us all uh, on the screen, right? So, oh, okay. yeah. So yes, you blow the conch like that. Yes. So so Duryodhan's side, they they start blowing the conch shell. Uh, you know, uh, Bhishma Pitama blows the conch shell, giving joy to Duryodhan. But then mm -hmm. Krishna and Pandavas, they start blowing their conch shell, and that sound. Creates a fearful, fearful yeah. creates a fearful mood in the in the Kaurava army. Yeah, so ominous sound. Yes. What is the next letter? U. U Let stands you. for yes, Bhakti. Uncertainty. Hmm. U stands for uncertainty. Here Arjun was unsure about a war. Mm. And he was uh, very unsure that whether he wants to continue with this war or he wants to stay back. So he was unsure. Somewhat. Yes. So the main thing here is that Arjuna asks Krishna that can you please okay. drive the chariot in the middle of the battlefield? Okay. And he's not sure, you know, how to go about with this war. Okay. Yes. Next letter is who wants to go? Mona? B. Mm -hmm. The next letter is B for bewilderment. And uh, Arjuna, when he gets to the middle of the battlefield, he starts thinking of the consequences of the war. Um, the loss of lives of relatives and friends. He became very confused and bewildered as to what he should do next. 
so bewildered meant is mainly he gets bewildered because he sees his grandfather like figures he sees his right friend the relatives yes he sees and uh, right sorry uh, correct and then you know these were his teachers these were mm. his seniors these were very important personalities in his life so for him to think about killing them he became extremely bewildered yes yes yes, yes. and the last letter is t uh, mitali can you share what is t all about it's turning point Hmm. Arjuna out of What emotional is the turning point. Arjuna out of his emotional attachment loses his intention. Arjuna loses what? Emotional out of his emotional uh, attachment. Hmm. Loses his uh, desire to fight. Fight, he yes. Says he gives. He throws many arguments as to why we should not fight, Krishna. You know, uh, men will die. Innocent men will die, and men will die. Then women will become widow. If woman becomes widow, people will exploit them. Then there will be unwanted progeny. Culture will be lost. There will be no shradha. You know, all those cultures will be lost. And eventually, what is the use of all of this wealth if I don't have anyone to enjoy with? Correct. That's why Krishna, I will not fight. Right. That is the turning point. Yeah, next time I want all of you to quickly share, huh? because now we are still in the first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Next time I'm not going to ask one, each and every letter. One person will share the entire acronym. Okay, D O B, yeah, D O U B T. Okay, entire acronym one person should share, because then we will proceed to the next chapter acronym. Yeah, so like this we will cover the entire chapter acronym as a recap, so that we can remember. Everything that we've learned so far, right? Second chapter, last time we did only half. Let's let's uh, hear from people who did not attend last time. Yeah, so what is this acronym that, yes, Aradhika? Acronym, acronym, I don't know, but I know the first 10 verses, what was the content of the first 10 verses. Mm -hmm. That was... Once there was a turning point and Krishna started giving all the grief-stricken reasoning to just leave the battlefield and uh, all that was happening, that's when Arjun, uh, Krishna did hold his hand and just say like, you know, like hand holding and in the sense that he unveiled to him and that's the, in the first 10 um, verses, we see how Arjuna actually accepts Krishna as a guru mm. and uh, the entire interplay of the entire text was all about uh, he taking him as a guru. He's always considered him as a great friend, as a spiritual person, as a great supernatural personality. Mm. But then uh, how Krishna then told him, and, and the, the, in the further text, what I heard was that uh, how then Krishna told Arjuna about... Um, how it's, the soul is uh, imperishable and the soul will never die. We are coming to that. We are coming to that. Perfect. So the first 10 verses is all about Arjuna accepting a humble position and accepts Krishna and surrenders to Krishna and tells Krishna, Krishna, now you guide me. You know, I accept you as my teacher, as my guru. Yeah. So G, G is the first letter of the acronym. Then what was the next letter? Chaitra. Identity. The next letter was I. I is for identity of the soul. Mm. This is where Krishna talks a little bit about the soul. He says, you know, body keeps changing, mm. but soul is, I mean, body changes, but soul is not like a body as in. It is eternal. Um, I don't know. Yes, it is eternal. Correct. That's the word. And um, how we have to behave with like happiness and sorrow are just like weather changes like winter and summer. Mm. And a person who is in the right state of mind shouldn't react to any of the feelings. They have to be mm. neutral. Mm. Um, yeah. And what about the characteristics of the soul? 
it's it's eternal and the soul just keeps passing on from one body to another correct yes and it cannot be perished it cannot yes it yeah, cannot be that perished it cannot be it cannot be killed it cannot be drowned it cannot be burnt right it is eternal yeah satchit anand it passes on to new body just like we change our clothes correct so yeah. why krishna begins the whole bhagavad gita after arjuna accepts krishna as guru the first and foremost thing that krishna shares is that arjuna first understand that you are not this body all of us all of you are eternal spirit souls right and that's where he gives the first philosophical explanation of how the body keeps changing but the soul is eternal dehi nosmin yata dehi kaumaram yavanam jara right to 2.13 verse right and then he says that happiness and distress keeps coming just like winter and summer season a sober person is not bewildered by such a change uh, sorry one should learn to tolerate this yeah so in all circumstances one should understand this philosophy and understand that the soul is eternal and it cannot be perished it cannot be killed hmm? so first and foremost we all should understand that we are not this body we are spirit soul i also gave an example of how we always call anything that we have with us we always say this is my iphone right so i am associating this phone with my body but when i say this is my finger who is this my that my is the soul isn't it so yeah there is a proper differentiation between the body and the atma the soul yeah so this is where we concluded and we had beautiful beautiful question answer session and we halted on text number 30 so now we will continue with reading from text 31 onwards and uh, before that i will just chant the pranam mantra to offer my gratitude to all the teachers ओम ज्ञानांजनाशलाकय चक्षुरोन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम हरे कृष्ण सो वी आर गोइंग टू रीड फ्रॉम चैप्टर टू of bhagavad gita uh, chapter entitled contents of the gita summarized and i'm going to ask all of you to read all the verses and important verses i hope we have all noted the important verses in the last class second chapter onwards actually many important verses start popping out yeah so wherever there is an important verse i will mention to you so now krishna concludes the philosophy of the soul right in text 30 o descendant of bharata he who dwells in the body can never be slain therefore you need not grieve for any living being I'll read the text thirty one, and then I will ask Maria, Mona, Mitali, Aradhika to read text thirty one. Considering your specific duty as a Shatriya, you should know that there is no better engagement for you than fighting on religious principles, and so there is no need for hesitation. Yes. Text thirty-two. O Partha, happy are the 
Kshatriyas to whom such fighting opportunities come unsought, opening for them the doors of the heavenly planets. Yes. You remember I had discussed that how for a warrior, it is a great opportunity to die in the battlefield. Warriors do not like to die a natural death. They don't want to get old and die. It is a great opportunity for them. Yeah. And for a warrior, it is the most abominable death if he dies without fighting in the war. Yeah. Because it is considered that whether he is in the good side or bad side, he will get heaven. He, his next birth will be heavenly planets. So that's why usually warriors, whether they are good, whether in the they are in the good party or the bad side, both sides, whoever dies, they get heavenly planet as their destination. Okay, and also I had explained about Partha. Anyone remembers about Partha? Why Arjuna is named Partha? Because of his mom. Who can tell me sequence by sequence what I had explained? I am sure some of you have made notes. Yes, George. He was one of... Uh, we discussed last, uh, last meeting, uh, Partha is one of the names of Arjuna, mm -hmm. meaning uh, son of Prita. Yes. Also known as Kunti. Yes. And what else? Why why Kunti why Kunti is named Pritha? Because she came from the lineage of King Prithu. Yes, because she comes from the lineage of King Prithu. Who is King Prithu? Son of King Vena. Correct. And what is the speciality of King Prithu? He served a uh, cow a lot. So the Mother Earth got happy and he start, Mother Earth started giving all the uh, minerals and everything, giving back resources. to us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And hence, Mother Earth is called? Prithvi. 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 Mother Earth got the name Prithvi because of King Prithu. And because Kunti comes from the lineage of King Prithu, Kunti's other name is Pritha. And because Arjuna is the son of Pritha, hence he, was, he is called Partha. Okay. And because Krishna is riding the chariot of Partha, Krishna's name is Partha Sarthi. Okay? So that's how the connection is. Hmm? Why yeah. Krishna addresses Arjuna as Partha? To remind him that, hey, you are not just ordinary Arjuna. You are a person who comes from the great lineage of King Prithu. That's why he addresses Arjuna as Partha. Okay. So, uh, Prabhuji, then hmm. uh, why he addresses only Arjuna as Parth, not the other siblings? Very beautiful question. I was thinking, if is there any intelligent person who will ask this question? <laughs> yes. So, actually, Kunti had five children. Correct? Yudhishthir, Bhima, Arjuna, Nakula and Sadev. Nakula and Sadev were Madri's children, but still they were they considered Kunti as their mother, stepmother. But why did why is Arjuna considered as Partha? Because the moment you say Pandavas, the first person that comes to your mind is Arjuna. Yeah, so Arjuna is representing. A representative son of King, Queen Kunti. Technically, everyone is Partha. 
But because Arjuna represents the whole Pandava group as the best of the archer, yeah, as the leading force who brought all the wealth to build the army of Pandavas, that's why he is addressed as Partha. Okay? Text 33. Yes. If, however, you do not perform your religious duty of fighting, then you will certainly incur sins for neglecting your duties and thus lose your reputation as a fighter. Mm. So Krishna emphasizes that, you know, you should perform your duty. Right? Because your duty as a Kshatriya is to fight. And if you neglect your duty, you will certainly incur sins. Yeah. And what happens when one does not do their duty is there in the next verse. Yes. Text 34. People will always speak of your infamy and for a respectable person, dishonor is worse than death. Yeah. Important verse. Text 35. The great generals who have highly esteemed your name and fame will think that you have left the battlefield out of fear only and thus they will consider you insignificant. Yes. So let's quickly read read the uh, text 34. We will. I would request everyone to repeat after me the Sanskrit of this important verse. Text 34. Hmm? Akirtim cha pibhutani. Yes, can I ask one person to repeat after me? Bhakti, can you repeat after me? And you can unmute and repeat after me. And everyone else also can repeat after me, but keep yourself mute. Yes. Akirtim cha Yes, akirtim cha pibhutani. Akirtim cha pibhutani. Katha yisyanti tevyayam. Katha sinti tevyayam. Sambhavitasya chakirtir. Sambhavitasya chakirtir. Maranad ati richyate. Maranad ati richyate. Yes, translation. People will always speak of your infamy. And for a respectable person, dishonor is worse than death. This sentence is very important. One who is respected for that person getting insulted in front of everyone, being dishonored in front of everyone is worse than that. So one should always remember uh, when we speak. Uh, sometimes we may speak something at a wrong time uh, to a person who needs to be respected. Mm -hmm. So one should also control the speech. And one of the most important aspect of becoming not only a devotee, not only a person who practices spirituality, but in general also, to achieve anything in life, to progress in life, one has to control their tongue. You should very carefully use your tongue. Because, Vacho Vegam Manasa Krodha Vegam Jibha Vegam Udarapasta Vegam yeah, the beautiful verse where it says, one who has control over the tongue, one who has control over the desire to taste food, desire to speak. Yeah. If one has control over those, one can make, one can become a guru. Yeah, so it's very important that we develop this quality of Controlling our tongue. Okay. And <clears throat> the next verse was, the great generals who have highly esteemed 
your name and fame will think that you have left the battlefield out of fear. Yes. People are not going to think, oh, Arjuna was such a great devotee, right? That he is leaving the battlefield thinking that jaane do abhi, de dete hain sab jaydaad. You know, we'll give away everything to this cover of army. They will not going to think like this. They will think that he is a coward. That's why he is leaving now. Uh, from the middle of the battlefield. Yeah, that's what Krishna emphasizes the importance of the war. Next. George, Mila, Joy, Chaitra, Bhakti, Umeshri can read. Text 37. No, 36. No, 36. 36. Text 36. Your enemies will describe you in many unkind words and scorn your ability. What could be more painful for you? Text 37. O son of Kunti, either you will be killed on the battlefield and attain the heavenly planets, or you will conquer and enjoy the earthly kingdom. Therefore, get up with determination and fight. Yeah, so Krishna explains that, look, either you will be killed in the battlefield, still, if you get killed in the battlefield, you'll get heavenly planets where you can enjoy, or you will conquer everything and you'll enjoy here. So it's better to do your duty and fight. Hmm? So all of us also must realize that it is very important to continue doing our duty even if we don't like. You know, sometimes as, as a businessman or as an employee or as a mother or as a father or as a wife or a husband or as a daughter and a you know, mother, one has to do their duties based on the responsibilities that we carry with that position. One should not shy away or run away from that. Okay. Next. Text 38. Do thou yeah, fight for the sake of fighting without considering happiness or uh, yeah, distress, loss or gain, victory or defeat. And by so doing, you shall never incur sin. Yes. So do it uh, for the sake of fighting because that's your duty. Right? Whether you lose or win, that's a different thing. Yeah. Yes, Joy. Uh, yeah, Harinam ji, uh, in line with what is happening these days all around the world, uh, from this text 32 to text 38, what we have read till now, uh, does this also incite people to, you know, uh, fight on religious grounds and, you know, people asking people to come to fight and if you only fight for your religion, you will attain heaven, you will attain eternity and mm -hmm. does this go in with that or, you know, how people are brainwashed and it is something in the similar lines. I, don't know. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. want guidance on this yes so so see one thing is that we have to understand the context on which krishna is sharing this with arjuna first and foremost there were multiple append, uh, multiple attempts for negotiating with the kaurava army why we should not fight correct krishna went as a mediator but still they were not agreeing. They said, I will not give even a piece of land that sticks to the tip of a needle. Correct? Right? Second, the entire thing was created in a way which was out of cheating in the gambling match. And that's how they stole everything from the Pandavas. Right? All of this, and there were multiple attempts to assassinate them when they were banished. Correct? Right? So, after all of this, when Krishna speaks Bhagavad Gita knowledge to Arjuna, any which ways war was inevitable. Whether Arjuna fought or did not fight, it was inevitable. Correct? 
Yeah. This discussion that happened between Krishna and Arjuna was a private discussion. You should never forget this. This was not yeah. a public lecture. Oh, everyone should fight. No. It was a private discussion specifically meant for Arjuna to inspire him to do his duty. And as a warrior, his duty was to fight. This does not mean that all of us who have a normal day job as an IT in whatever field and we have to take the weapons now and go and fight. Okay, this, this discussion doesn't mean that everyone has been encouraged now to leave their yoga teaching or leave their business or uh, you know healers or whatever and go and take weapons and fight. Okay, another thing is that see we don't know what inspires other people's faith or practices to go and kill everyone. What we understand that is that if any person is genuinely practicing spirituality, if any person has love for God, he will naturally develop compassion for every living being. Not just humans. Every living entity, he will develop naturally, natural compassion. So violence is never, never, never promoted. Yeah, If someone really loves God, the most natural thing that develops is compassion to everyone. And that's what Arjuna did in the first chapter. The reason why he did not want to fight was compassion towards everyone. But then Krishna had to inspire Arjuna that yes, compassion is needed, but not in this case. Because already everything has been done to take care of it. Everything has been arranged. All the 18 Akshwini Sena is right in front now. Now you are in the middle of the battlefield. Now you can't run away. You will be called a coward. Right? As a Kshatriya, yeah. as a fighter, as a warrior, now your duty is to fight. All that you wanted to do, if you would have done all this before, that's a different thing. Now when you are in the verge of doing your duty, you are running away out of emotions. You understood the whole context of this? Yeah. 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 Thank you in for explaining general, it. So, so yes. Thank in you. general, any faith, any religion, if you are practicing, it's very nice. But how do you test whether it is genuine or not? The only way to test is, does it develop love and compassion towards everyone? It's as simple as that. Okay? So that's very important. Yeah? Thank you. Yes, next. Text 39. Thus far I have described this knowledge to you through analytical study. Now listen as I explain it in terms of working without fruitive results. O son of Pratap, when you act in such knowledge, you can free yourself from the bondage of works. Hmm. So now he gives, Krishna now give, he gives a little glimpse of Karma Yoga. Yeah, he said, okay, now I explain to you analytical study of how soul is eternal. You know, if you're doing your duty and killing them, you're not actually killing that person because the soul is eternal. You're just doing your duty. Yeah, by annihilating the miscreants. Now, let me explain to you, just by doing this work, doing this duty, what results you will accumulate and how you can free yourself from karma, bondage of works. Okay? Yes, next. Next, 40. In this endeavor, there is no loss on or diminution and a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear. Yes, 
very very important verse please mark a star for text 2.40 yeah and i request since bhakti read this i request bhakti to again repeat after me okay neha bikrama nasosti neha bikrama nasosti pratyavayo na vidyate pratnavayo na vidyate sva alpam api asya dharmasya sva alpam api asya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat trayate mahato bhayat yes in this endeavor there is no loss or diminution and a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear so practicing bhakti practicing krishna consciousness there is no loss and even little advancement that we do in our krishna consciousness in our bhakti it can protect us from the most dangerous type of fear hmm what is the most dangerous type of fear fear of death fear of death but more danger than that fear Next. of not living the life we wanted huh huh sorry i'm saying sorry uh, when it's our time to go to god uh, so we always have a second i mean a thought that you know we could not live like that or that so i think that is one of the most biggest fear that you cannot live your life the way you want basically uh, that is no. the most uh, no um, uh, losing our loved ones uh, yes bhakti losing our loved ones losing Family? our loved ones okay no i think the what is the most if you don't uh, if you don't recollect krishna when you are leaving the body uh, the fear of not remembering him fear of not remembering him in see technically speaking you all are right you all are giving the right answer but anyone has any other answer yeah losing i would uh, i would say yes maria a uh, continual rebirth continue the rebirth is the most dangerous type of fear okay yeah. yes losing one's prestige losing one's yes. prestige so yes. yeah so in 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 one sense yes all of you are giving the right answer but the most dangerous type of fear is dying and getting a lower birth Krishna till yes. now explains that how you know at the time one changes the body from boyhood to youth to old age and the time of death that soul takes another body so actually speaking there is no fear kya darne ka you don't have to fear about it you will get another body fresh new body baby chubby cheeks you know dancing <laughs> jumping here and there right new body but the most dangerous type of fear is that the fear of getting a lower species of life correct isn't it imagine yes you think of something or you do something some acts or you know the karma leads you to a lower species of life you may think okay i harina i don't mind becoming a dog you know dogs are good my dear friend you may become dog and you may be taken care very nicely if you are in us or in some developed country god forbid you take birth as a dog in pakistan or some other country where they literally do things which are very abominable correct and they treat animals very mis uh, you know badly so the most dangerous type of fear is that getting birth as a in a lower species of life 
Hence, one who takes up Krishna consciousness, one who takes up bhakti in our human form of life, at least the guarantee is there that at least in next birth I may get a human form of life. You understood? Yeah, that's why Krishna emphasizes this. That even small endeavor in this regard saves us from the biggest of dangers. But Prabhu, if you're born as a dog, if somebody is, takes a birth lower and goes into a dog's life, you wouldn't know that he wasn't human before. He would be born and he would lead with a dog consciousness. Correct. But it's just that, of course, I understand the bigger picture that, you know, we are digressing, like we are going back in the path and then nirvana will be like, liberation will be longer. Correct. So I get that. Yeah. So, so. We never thought this was a fear. I mean, I don't know how many of us in the class have ever, ever thought of this fear. Yes. That's the so thing. Thank you. We never. We never. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Because of lack of knowledge does not mean that it will not happen. Because I don't know there is a camera on Sheikh Zayed Road does not mean that uh, if I speed, I will not get fine. The law is there. Law of karma is such that we don't know many things, but that's what happens as per the law. So yes, you know, now for now, just for an example, I gave the dog example. What if we become a cockroach? Or some insect or something, right? So we don't know. But for one who is knowledgeable, they will immediately take the steps. At least let me take up Krishna consciousness seriously so that next life I am assured that I will not degrade my life. Degrade into a lower species of life. You understand? Yes. So please mark this important verse. Huh? Okay. Hi, Namri. Sorry, one question. Yes. So do you mean that being born as a human is like the higher form of birth? Absolutely. This we discussed in the previous sessions also that getting a human form of life is so rare. <laughs> Only in human form of life one has higher intelligence Discrimination power and anyone remember the third one? Reasoning power. Correct? Okay, bhai, why there is suffering in this world? Why do bad things happen to good people? And vice versa. Only in human form of life. In animal form of life, you can't question anything. You just live your life to take care of eating, sleeping, waiting, depending. That's it. Right? So hence, human form of life is very rare and very important. And one should take up this human form of life very seriously. And not waste. Like animals. Yeah? Yes, Bhakti. Ji, after how many births you get the human life? Mm. So it is said eight point there are eight point four million species of life. Chorasi lakh yoni. Eight point four million species of life. I'm not saying that after those many species or those many births you have got this human form of life, but we don't know. What's the desire? What's the karma of each and every one? But it is very rare to get a human form of life. We take it very easily because there are, oh, so there are millions of people are around me in metro. I see thousands of people. How can you say, Harinam, that human form is very rare? But when you compare with the millions, billions and un unlimited number of living entities that exist. Right? You will realize that how rare is human form. 
Okay. Yes, Just Mona. quickly, are we talking about all the entities on Earth or in the universe? In the universe. The scriptures Thank talks you. about the universe. Everything that we are speaking and reading is relate is applicable to everything that exists in the universe, not just Earth. Thank you. Yes. yes so let's proceed next. Hare Krishna, verse forty one. Those who are on this path are resolute in purpose, and their aim is one. O beloved child of the Kurus, the intelligence of those who are irresolute is many branched. Yeah. yeah, this is very simple to understand. Next, yes, Sylvia, Sonia, Anirudh. Tana and Lipika. So, text 42 to 43. Men of small knowledge are very much attached to the flowery words of the Vedas, which recommend various fruitive activities for elevation to heavenly planets result in good birth, power, and so forth. Being desirous of sense gratification and opulent life, they say that there is nothing more than this. Yes, so men who have small knowledge, they are not, they are seekers of material benefits. They get attached to the flowery words of the Vedas. Where does the Vedas come from? From Krishna only. Krishna says, I am the source of all the Vedic literatures. But those are meant for various purposes. Purusharthas, dharma, artha, kama and moksha. But what happens? People get attached to the fruitive activities of the Vedas and forget the purpose of the Vedas. Okay. Next. Text 44. In the minds of those who are too attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence and who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination for the devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place. Yes. So the very fact that all of you are desirous to read Bhagavad Gita and dedicate your Thursday evenings proves that at least you are all not too much attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence. Yeah? Because those who are too attached to all of these things, they do not have interest in devotional service to the Supreme Lord. They do not have interest in such topics. Yeah, That's why you see very few people are interested in reading such literatures. Correct? But like, if I'm enjoying this, then sort of I'm still serving that enjoyment, no? Sorry, sorry. Can you share again, Sylvia? So if I'm enjoying these lectures, let's say, then I'm still doing it for the enjoyment as well. Like, yes. I mean, to me, that's like a question of like the selfless act. Is it really always selfless? Because if I'm getting joy out of it, being doing something that is like practically selfless, then it's not selfless again. Yes. So, so the thing I is... Yeah, there is goodness and there is pure goodness. Yeah, what is pure goodness? When you do any spiritual activity, okay, that is pure goodness. Right? So, enjoyment is not bad. For example, what is a sinful activity. Any activity which goes against the principles of the Vedic literatures or of the scriptures, that is sinful activity. If I kill someone, it is sinful. But if that killing is done 
under the authority of the government it is worthy of a medal isn't it i gave you this example of a soldier a soldier who kills in the war hundreds of people in the war he gets a medal but the same soldier comes back home and kills his neighbor because of parking fight parking issues he will be jailed right so the intention matters so similarly when we do anything which is spiritual activity nava vidha bhakti nine processes of devotional service obviously it will give you more joy and bliss anything that brings you closer to the supreme closer to the divine closer to krishna consciousness that is good anything that takes us away from krishna consciousness should be avoided okay so any enjoyment that brings you closer to krishna consciousness that is pure form of enjoyment right any form of enjoyment that takes you away from bhakti away from krishna consciousness one should avoid it it's as simple as that yeah beautiful beautiful narendran ji thank you thank you is next text 45 the vedas deal mainly with the subject of the three modes of material nature o arjuna become transcendental to these three modes be free from all dualities and from all anxieties for gain and safety and be established in the self yeah so this is the first verse first time krishna now talks of three modes of material nature anyone remembers this three modes of material nature yes maria uh tamas rajas and sattva very good yeah so goodness passion and ignorance the three modes of material nature yeah so what does krishna say that o arjuna become transcendental to these three modes be free from all dualities and from all anxieties for gain and safety be established in the self yeah one should try to not get distracted by these three modes okay let's see what he shares next text 46 all purposes served by a small well can at once be served by a great reservoir of water similarly all purpose all the purposes of the vedas can be served to one who knows the purpose behind them yes yeah so all the purposes that is served by a well yeah what does the well help in so many things people go there i don't know how many of you have experienced using water from a well how many of you have experienced using water from the well chaitra you have never experienced the whole life you have used tap water you are born in dubai no okay yes yeah, so from those... bachelor ram ji never never experienced not... pulling water from the well no okay so i have i mean even even not in your village but back in the days you know there was something called as a well okay and all the people they would go at the well and they would take the water and they would put on their head or on their on their hips and they would carry till their home and when they would bring it to their home they would use for cooking for washing for bathing for so many other purposes correct but always the well there were also wells which are meant for different purposes some wells were meant for only drinking water some wells were meant for only for various other purposes so krishna gives this beautiful analogy of how all purpose of small well can be served by a great reservoir of water you don't have to look for different wells because wells would sometimes deplete there would be no more water 
it can be served by the great reservoir of water and yeah, the purpose is of the small well can be served by great reservoir of water similarly the purpose of all the vedic literatures all the knowledge that is there can be served to one who knows the purpose behind them so one should not see vedas as the source of how i can enjoy how i can benefit from the knowledge of the vedas how i can elevate myself what is the purpose of the vedic literatures ultimately to liberate oneself from the cycle of birth and death okay next <clears throat> yes uh, rishi it's, it's my turn yes lipika go ahead and shubangi yeah. be ready so text 47 you have a right to perform your prescribed duty but you are not entitled to the fruits of the action never consider yourself the cause of the results of your activities and never be attached to not doing your duty yes again very important verse text 2.47 you might have heard this verse million times yes yes yeah? this is where it comes from huh? Lipika please repeat after me everyone repeat after me but keep yourself mute Lipika will unmute herself yes karmani va tikharaste karmani va tikharaste ma phaleshu kadachana ma phaleshu kadachana ma karma phal hetur bhur ma karma phal hetur bhur माते संगोस्तव अकर्मणि माते सर्व माते संगोस्तव अकर्मणि यस यू हैव अ राइट टू परफॉर्म योर प्रिस्क्राइब्ड ड्यूटी बट यू आर नॉट एंटाइटल्ड टू द फ्रूट्स ऑफ एक्शन सो ऑल ऑफ अस वी हैव अ राइट टू डू आवर ड्यूटी बट इट इज नॉट दैट ओ बिकॉज़ आई हैव डन दिस आई हैव टू गेट दिस आई हैव टू गेट द रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस never consider yourself the cause of the result of your activities and never be attached to not doing your duty why krishna says this why does he say never be attached to not doing your duty see what is the first thing krishna shares that one should do one's duty but You are not entitled for the fruits. मतलब मैंने काम किया, I have done work, but I will, I should not expect the result or the fruits of the work. And not only I should not expect anything, I should not think that I have done all of this. so one may think that are i should first do my duty on top of that i should not expect anything and i should not think also that because of me this duty has been done this work has been finished so why should i do any duty why should i work hence krishna makes that last sentence and one should not be attached to not doing duty that means one should still do the duty you understood because someone may become smart no someone may think that are if i should not look for results also and i should not think that i am doing everything then why should i do anything i'll just sit quiet and be like this not do any work let my wife do everything or let my parents do everything no one should continue doing their duty one should not get attached to not doing their any duty one should not become lazy in short okay in all aspects one should do their duty okay
next but this is a little difficult it's about mindset and one who masters this mindset na they become the happiest people it is difficult to not take credit for all the work that you have mm. done especially especially in today's corporate world yeah so one should diplomatically handle such situations so i always tell my team always make your to dos daily weekly monthly responsibilities everyone in my team i have given them a list i said make a whole list of what all things you do daily what all things you do weekly what all things you do monthly and follow that and if you are doing that that becomes that list becomes part of your kra it's as simple as that people who don't track this and track how much time you are spending on each of this work so you give you list it down against that you write 10 minutes 5 minutes 20 minutes list it down and see how beautifully your work will be organized no boss will be ever be able to challenge you that you are not doing anything problem happens when we don't list our own work isn't it for those of you who are working having jobs real problem happens that at the end at the time when the kra happens you don't know what all things you have done yeah yes dana Sorry, I'm not able to unmute. Um, is this also uh doing the work and letting go of the outcome, retiring from the outcome? Yes. So in 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 essence, Krishna is also sharing that. Yes. More of this he will share in the next chapters. So if you see, this chapter is contents of Gita summarized. So in this chapter, he has given bits and pieces of what he is going to explain in detail later chapters in the later chapters. so he spoke about how one should do their duty one should not be attached he spoke about what is uh, three modes of material nature he spoke about vedas the purpose of the vedas right and now he is also talking about how one should not be attached to the fruits yeah and not consider oneself to be the one who has done all these activities all of this in detail he will explain in the later chapters so first when he when arjuna surrenders krishna gives a summary of the bhagavad gita and then based on arjuna's question he gives more details about equanimity yes equanimity that's the next verse that's what krishna talks about thank you shubhangi for reminding us the meaning of this word so i kind of uh, googled perfect you know, there are so many words and meaning which i don't know and i am get so excited you know finding out everything so i'll go through text 48 yes you know, you know you know what your... when i was when i was 17 years old that's when i got introduced to the teachings of bhagavad gita and mm -hmm. i was doing the same thing those days we did not have laptops we did not have computers also so <laughs> much we did not have mobile phones so i used to take my bhagavad gita and i used to take oxford dictionary with me both together oh. and sit and look for the words that i did not understand from the bhagavad gita those were the beautiful days that we used to spend yeah, with because without that there is no point you won't get through you know what the line is trying to say or what the word is trying to say so yeah it's very important correct you should know the meaning yes yeah so yes. i'll go, ahead, go, go through text for you yeah which is to form your duty echo poised o arjuna aban sorry abandoning all attachment to success or failure such equanimity is called yoga yes again important verse repeat after me subhangi and everyone else yoga sth kuru karmani योगस्थ कुरु कर्मानी 
संगम त्यक्वा धनंजय संगम त्यक्वा धनंजय सिद्धि असिद्ध्यो समो भूत्वा सिद्धि असिद्ध्यो समो भूत्वा समत्वम योग उच्यते समत्वम योग उच्यते यस सो कृष्ण सेज one should perform one's duty equipoised equipoised means balanced uh, not getting disturbed here and there o arjuna abandoning all attachment to success or failure hmm? sometimes we get super attached to ah yes i have got what i wanted or oh i didn't get what i wanted such equanimity is called yoga being balanced hmm, is called yoga and here in the purport prabhupada explains what is that yoga yoga means to concentrate the mind upon the supreme by controlling the ever disturbing senses hmm. so ultimately the purpose of yoga is to control the mind and remember the supreme lord and that is achievable only when one person when a person is equally poised if one is getting too over excited and too depressed based on what they are performing what they are doing in life then there will always be stressful situation and today's day and age the biggest disease that everyone has is stress every second person is suffering from stress anxiety right yes next one i guess jeet is not accessible i assume he might be traveling we'll i'll read the next one o oh, dhananjaya keep all abominable activities far distant by devotional service and in that consciousness surrender unto the lord those who want to enjoy the fruits of their work are misers why does he call them misers do you remember what example i had given you guys who is a miser one who doesn't like to spend anything and what is the juicy word kanjus yes yeah miser means kanjus makki juice <laughs> ha makki chus ya yeah? kanjus makki chus ya yeah? so one who has so much of wealth of money of resources but does not spend even a little for his own benefit forget about others others so he will not spend but even for himself he will not spend that is a miser so krishna very specifically addresses to arjuna and what he calls him he calls him dhananjaya can you imagine dhananjaya means o oh, conqueror of wealth on one side he is calling arjuna as Con conqueror of wealth because he brought so much of wealth and resources to make this war happen and on the other side he is giving the example of being a miser yeah because having all the resources of having good intelligence higher intelligence reasoning power discriminating power still as a human being if we continue to lead a life of how we can eat better how we can sleep better how we can mate better how we can defend better then it's a miser you are using your intelligence only for this petty things to enjoy your senses that's it hmm? that's why he gives this example next is it me after you now yes yes Or, okay yes we are now. um from beginning text 50 a man engaged in devotional service 
rids himself of both the good and bad reactions, even in this life. Therefore, strive for yoga, which is the art of all work. Yes, important verse. Please note. Text 2.50. Maria, repeat after me. And everyone also can repeat. Buddhi yukto jahati ha. Buddhi yukto jahati ha. Ubhe sukrita duskrite. Ubhe sukrita duskrite. 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 Tasmad yoga ya yujyasva. Tasmad yoga ya yujyasva. Yoga karma su kaushalam. Yoga karma su kaushalam. Yes. Krishna says a man engaged in devotional service rids himself of both good and bad reactions even in this life. Therefore, Strive for yoga, which is the art of all work. So he is emphasizing that one should take up to devotional service sincerely. Whenever we get opportunity to render any devotional service in any spiritual activity, one should take it up enthusiastically. Don't use your so-called intelligence. No, I don't like to do this. I don't want to travel so far. Yeah. Just take up, engage your body, mind and senses in devotional service and see how blissful your life will become. Not only you get rid of your bad reaction, even good reactions. That means no karma. A karma one performs and when there is a karma, no reaction. That means no rebirth. Yeah. Next. Muna, unmute. Sorry, I was trying to unmute. Text 51. By thus engaging in devotional service to the Lord, great sages or devotees free themselves from, from the results of work in the material world. In this way, they become free from the cycle of birth and death and attain the state beyond all miseries by going back to Godhead. Yes. Right? So here Krishna very clearly mentions the secret of not falling into the trap of cycle of birth and death. What is the secret? N not to be attached, disengage, just do it. Uh, out of devotion and don't be attached to the fruits, bad or good. Yes, devotional service is the secret. Yeah, yeah. bhakti means devotional service. Bhakti means love and devotion, but it should translate into devotional service. Correct? Yeah. So, it's very important to understand that one should take up devotional service. And Krishna says, one attains the state beyond all miseries. This creation, this world is known as Dukkhalem. The spiritual world is called Vaikuntham. In this verse, Krishna addresses this world, the place of misery is Anamayam. Which means without miseries. Yeah, spiritual world he addresses as Anamayam. Sorry, not material world. Spiritual world. Yeah. Anamayam. Which is also the other name of Vaikuntha. Kuntha means misery. Vai means no. Vai kunta means place of no miseries. Okay. Yes. Next. Text 52. 
when your intelligence has passed out of the dense forest of delusion, you shall become indifferent to all that has been heard and all that is to be heard. Mm. Next. When your mind is no longer disturbed by the flowery language of the Vedas and when it remains fixed in the trance of the self-realization, then you have attained the divine consciousness. Yes. So text number 31 to text number 53. The acronym letter is T. T stands for two duties. Okay, so if you notice, Krishna first says that first and foremost your duty is towards your position, your designation, your situation that you are in. Uh, so as a warrior, as a Kshatriya, your duty is to fight. So each one of us have two duties. One, the duty towards our situation, our position, our material duties. And second most important duty is spiritual duties. Devotional service. Duty towards your soul. Your own soul. Material duties you are doing for others. And you are doing for your body, to maintain your body. But the other duty is spiritual duty which is for your own soul. So that you can come out of the cycle of birth and death. So, text 31 to 53, he talks about two duties. T stands for two duties. Okay? Yes. Next. Uh, text number 54. Arjuna said, O Krishna, what are the symptoms of one whose consciousness is thus merged with the transcendence? How does he speak and what is his language? How does he sit and how does he walk? Yes. So now Arjuna is saying, okay, Krishna, if you are saying these two duties are important and one should practice this, can you describe the symptoms of one who practices these two duties? What happens to that person? How does he speak? How does he behave? How does he sit? How does he walk? Yeah, you have given a beautiful uh, you know, thing to practice. But can you give us the example? Let's see what Krishna answers. Text number 55. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, O Partha, when a man gives up all varieties of desire for sense gratification, which arise from mental concoction, and when his mind, thus purified, finds satisfaction in the self alone, then he is said to be in pure transcendental consciousness. Yes. So he says, a man, when a man gives up all desires to enjoy his senses, which arise from mental concoction. What is concoction? Do you know? Uh, uh, formula. formula. Yeah, mixing and matching. Yeah. Mixing and matching. So we cook up all these in our mind. Oh, I want to enjoy this. I want to go here. I want to go there. Then I'll do this. I'll do that. I want to see this. I want to feel that. We create all this mental concoction of how I want to enjoy a certain thing when one gives up the desire to do all that. Yeah. And his mind is focused in devotional service. Finds satisfaction in self alone. Does not mean that he becomes a lonely person, huh, by the way. Here it does not mean, okay, go in one room and I'll become nice and quiet and not do anything. No. He does not get bothered by dualities of life. Yeah. Next. Text 56. One who is not disturbed in mind 
even amidst the threefold miseries or elated when there is happiness and who is free from attachment, fear and anger is called a sage of steady mind. Yes. So Krishna explains that this person, one who is distur not disturbed in mind, even amidst the threefold miseries. What are the threefold miseries? Anyone remembers? Miseries of the body, soul and mind. Yes. Not body, soul and mind, but miseries. You, you were there, you were right there, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is old age and death. Adi Vatika, Adi. Ah, right. Correct. Suffering by inter, uh, ex, internal, external, and by karmic factors. Correct. So, so what what Mila is also sharing. So, I'll I'll mention this again. Please note down. Okay. Three fold miseries. There's a difference. Three modes of material nature. Three fold miseries. Okay. Three modes of material nature. What is three modes of material nature? Goodness, passion and ignorance. Okay. Those are modes. Threefold miseries is Adi Adhyatmika which means miseries caused by mind and senses. That's right. Misery is caused by one's own mind and senses, not others' mind and senses. Your own mind and senses. Correct? Sometimes we suddenly think, oh, you know, how come this lady did not give me even water? I visited her home. Then, you know, you cook up some story in your mind and you create a problem. Correct? How come Mila did not make breakfast for me? You know, doesn't she realize I'm so hungry in the morning? But genuinely, she might be busy. Yeah, but your mind starts creating these stories. Right? How come Harinam doesn't realize that it's nine o'clock already now? It's time for dinner. Yeah, he continues the lecture till ten o'clock. Yeah, the <laughs> mind starts creating these stories. Yeah, but one doesn't realize it's mentioned seven thirty to nine thirty. Yeah. So, mind starts creating, senses start creating problems, correct? So, mind and senses. Misery is caused by other living yeah. beings. Yeah. Mila and George are nicely having dinner and suddenly a fly comes and starts hovering around them, starts disturbing them. And instead of hearing my sound, they start hearing the sound of the fly. Or you're driving, I gave this example, you're driving on Sheikh Zayed Road and someone from, some local or someone will start tailgating you. Right? You're, you're doing, you're driving on 120 exact, not even 118, exact 120. Yeah? Cruise control on at 120. Still someone will come and tailgate you. Misery is caused by other living beings. Correct? And third is misery is caused by natural calamities. Earthquake, tsunamis, too much heat, too much cold. Yeah. We have no control. In Technically speaking, we have no control in any of this. So one who is not disturbed by this three fold miseries. In Sanskrit, it is called Tapatraya. Patraya. Yes, Tapatraya. And that's why we always chant Om Shanti 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 three times. The first Shanti is May there be peace in one's own mind and senses. May there be peace in other living beings and may there be peace in nature. 
That's why we chant Shanti, Shanti, Shanti three times. It is not, oh, let's chant three times so that it sounds good. That should be the mood when one chants this three times. Okay? Yes, Joy. Yeah, uh, Hiramji, why do we use Om uh, before we uh, say Shanti Shanti? Just because it's auspicious or? Auspicious sound, yeah. It is the sound of creation, oh. universal sound, yes. And also addresses the Supreme Lord. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita later chapters, I am the syllable Om, Arjuna. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Next. Text 57. I think George has a question. Yes, George. Yeah, it, it's just a it's just a funny question, Harinamji. So um, text 56. Say, for example, after that heavy rain and it's like flooded now in your basement and then you, co you come down, you know, the water is uh, the water is like up to your body and your your car is completely submerged underwater. Mm. What would be like an appropriate, uh, you know, reaction since mm. we're like... Uh, we're attain we're trying to not be disturbed by the threefold miseries of life. Mm. What is the appropriate reaction when Mila not does not give you breakfast? <laughs> you just tolerate. <laughs> Isn't it? Tolerance. Mm. <laughs> Krishna again and again, if you notice in the whole Bhagavad Gita. One of two lessons he continuously gives again and again. Patience and tolerance. We are living in the world of miseries. To expect that everything will be fine is foolishness. To expect that everyone will behave the way we want them to behave is foolishness. Right? So the only way is to how I can control my mind and how I can develop the qualities of patience and tolerance. And keep my focus on the goal. What is the focus of my, of the, uh, what is the goal? Continue doing devotional service. Go back to God. Liberation. And while keeping that focus strong, I continue doing my duties. That's what Krishna in the whole Bhagavad Gita emphasizes on. Yeah. Yes. Let's proceed. Text 57. In the material world, one who is unaffected by whatever good or evil he may obtain, neither praising it nor despising it, is firmly fixed in perfect knowledge. Yeah. Beautiful verse, isn't it? One who is unaffected by whatever good or evil, good or bad, one should not get disturbed. One should be focused. Because see, there are so many things that are happening good around us. There is so many things that is going bad around us. Injustice happening around us. Isn't it? Countries fighting war. Each side is thinking that they are correct. If you get involved in all of this, you will get dragged. All we can do is pray for everyone. Neither praising it nor despising it is per firmly fixed in perfect knowledge. Okay, next. Text 58. 
one who is able to withdraw his senses from the senses objects as the purpose drawn it links within the shell it formally fixed in perfect consciousness. Yes. Have you guys seen a tortoise? Have you played with a tortoise or seen it in a zoo? Yes. Yeah, you've seen how tortoise, the moment you disturb the tortoise, it immediately brings back all its limbs inside and goes into the shell. Correct? So many temples in India, there is a tortoise outside, uh, just outside the Garbhagriha, the, the sanctum centurium. Yeah? The tortoise is to remind all of us this verse. So one should try to withdraw his senses, stay away from sense objects to be able to fix in perfect consciousness. You understood? Anything that distracts us from our goal, one should become like a tortoise. We all know the story of the tortoise and the rabbit. Why does the tortoise win? Because he was focused on the goal. Yeah, the focus is very important. Many times we blame, oh, this was my idea. I didn't, you know, someone else took my idea and did this and it. Forget about what others are doing. We are more worried about what others are doing than worrying about what is my own goal in life. Whether it is your goal in your professional life or your personal life or anything that you want to achieve in life. Each one of us has the ability to achieve anything in life. As long as you are true to yourself. As long as you are focused on the goal. So hence Krishna also shares that how one should focus on your goal. Your, to achieve anything in life. Whether it is spirituality or it is even material life. How did... Ravana achieves so much power because his goal was not to go back to Godhead. His goal was to achieve power in such a way that he cannot, he will be undefeatable. And he achieved it. So one should focus on what is my goal. My goal is to go back to Godhead. Anything that helps me to go achieve that goal, I will do that. Any association that helps me achieve that goal, I'll do that. I have lived enough of my life of enjoyment and sense gratification. Now, slowly, slowly, let me withdraw from the association that pulls me away from bhakti. And let me focus and be in the association of like-minded souls who inspire me in bhakti, in devotional service. Isn't it true? For all of us. We have done so many things. We have enjoyed our life. We have done, you know, jo bhi karna tha kar liya. Now it's time to focus. You know, someone may think that, oh, I'm still young. I still have time to enjoy my life. Right? But give your youth in the service of the Lord. That is more valuable than giving your old body in the service of the Lord with back pains and leg pains and headaches and migraines and cramps right so when you are young grab that opportunity to use your body in the service of the Lord to render devotional service yeah you when you love someone, you offer fresh flowers. You don't offer old, drained out, crumpled flowers, right? So your body is that flower, the fresh flower, beautiful flower, when it is young. 
So offer your body to the Lord now when you are young, when you are able to do things. Many people say, oh, spirituality is for old people. Now you enjoy, have fun, drink. Yeah. Be merry. That's not what you do when you love someone. Right? You don't waste your energy, time and resources. Yeah? Great. Let's move on. Text 59. Though the embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, the taste for sense objects remains. But Seizing such engagements by experiencing a higher taste, he is fixed in consciousness. Yes. So Next. it's not that the desire to sense enjoyment will go away immediately. We have been experiencing, we have been enjoying not only in this life, we have been enjoying in multiple births. We have been enjoying from many, many births. We have been enjoying only. So it's not that it will seize away immediately. One should engage that experience by developing higher taste. Yeah, one can leave, one can seize that enjoyment by developing higher taste. For example, I knew one friend who was super addicted to rock and rock and roll and you know hard rock music. And how this person, once he got into Krishna consciousness, started listening to music which is related to Krishna consciousness. Right? So person who is addicted to hardcore, hard metal, hard rock music has now slowly transformed into listening to healing music. His whole lifestyle changed. And this person eventually become a monk. You know, in our temple. Right? So, I just give a small example, but you can translate this to many other things that one may experience in life, in terms of sense and Yeah? Next. is there everyone forgot who is after Umesh Ji, Bhakti, Lipika Sonia I'll read yes go ahead yeah okay uh, text 60 the senses are so strong and impetuous oh Arjuna they are forcibly carry away the mind even of a man of a discrimination who is endeavoring to control them. Yes, so senses are so strong and impetuous. Oh Arjuna, they forcibly carry away the mind even a man who is discrimination, man of discrimination who is endeavoring to control them. Yeah, so even Krishna knows that senses are very strong. They drag you huh, from spirituality. Drag you away. Next. Text 61. One who restrains his senses, keeping them under full control and fixes his consciousness upon me is known as a man of study intelligence. Hmm. Yes. So one should control his senses. Next. Sylvia. While contemplating the objects of the senses, a person develops attachment for them. And from such attachment, lust develops and from lust, anger arises. Yes. So one starts thinking about the objects of the senses. For example, I want 
a particular gadget yeah object of the sense that gives me satisfaction one starts thinking about it again and again and again eventually the person becomes attached to it because thinking so much about it and by thinking so much about it one person develops attachment and then finally that attachment leads the person to develop the lust that means to enjoy that and when that enjoyment is not satisfied anger arises okay what happens next sonia shubangi can you read i think sonia is not available Hello? yes slipika go ahead Hello. yeah from anger complete delusion arises and from the delusion bewilderment of memory when memory is bewildered intelligence is lost and when intelligence is lost one falls down again into the material pool yes when our desires are not fulfilled anger arises and from anger complete delusion yeah you get frustrated and in that frustration we bewilderment of memory you forget all the good things the other person has done or you forget all the good things that you were living you forget that you are you know you forget to be grateful for what you have already in life yeah? and when memory is bewildered intelligence is lost you speak harsh words you lose the relationship you lose the friendship and when intelligence is lost one falls down again in the material pool feels miserable oh what have i done yeah so krishna is giving a beautiful example of how one gets into suffering how one falls down into suffering yeah next um uh, but a person free okay so yes subhangi go ahead text text 64 but a person free from all attachment and aversion and able to control his senses through regulative principles of freedom can obtain the complete mercy of the lord yeah free from all attachment aversion and able to control his senses through regulative principles of freedom yeah, we all have freedom to do whatever we want in life but if it is regulated then all of this can be possible to control yeah and one obtains complete mercy of the lord next text 65 i will read for one thus satisfied in krishna consciousness the threefold miseries of material existence exist no longer you understood george your answer of your water getting filled in the basement yes yes Yeah, one thus satisfied in Krishna consciousness, the three pole misery of material does exist no longer. In such satisfied consciousness, one's intelligence is soon well established. Hmm? When one understands that problems will keep coming, miseries will keep coming, I just have to deal with it in that situation when it comes. But I continue to focus on my goal. Right. next tax 66 one who is not connected with the supreme in krishna consciousness can have neither transcendental intelligence nor a steady mind without which there is no possibility of peace and how can there be any happiness without peace yes one who is not connected with the supreme with the divine can never can neither can have neither transcendental intelligence nor a steady mind yeah if the intelligence and steady mind is not there which is the main reason for for one to have peace in life there is no peace huh? and when how can there be happiness without peace if one is always worried about so many things going on yeah next 
Text 67. As a strong wind sweeps away a boat on the water, even one of the roaming senses on which the mind focuses can carry away a man's intelligence. Yes, so again, very important uh, important message that Krishna gives us that one should keep our focus strong that no matter what yes, we all have our lives we all have our things to do we all have our own uh, uh, you know, goals uh, temporary goals uh, in life uh, we all have our own senses which sometimes we may have to take care of but one should never forget one's goal. Hmm? At the end of the day, my goal is to remain Krishna conscious. At the end of the day, my goal is to be in the association of people who are Krishna conscious. At the end of the day, my goal is to render devotional service. No matter what, my commitment towards Thursday evening stays. Isn't it? So we should yeah. all... Even if you had a bad day, let me just fresh up, splash some water, fresh cold water on your face and just try to be happy and come online and read and see how it takes you to another level of happiness. Isn't it true? Not everyone has a beautiful, happy, exciting Thursday. Right? So, you have achieved the power of disciplining and training your mind by doing so. And when one does that, when struggles, when pains, when anxieties, when miseries comes in front of you, in, on your face, you will be able to boldly challenge and face them. Yeah, these are small, small acts that helps us in our life. Yeah. Next. Text 68. Therefore, O mighty armed, one whose senses are restrained from their objects is suddenly of steady intelligence. Hmm. Next. Text 69. What is needed for all beings is the time of awakening for the self-controlled. And the time of awakening for all beings is the night for the introspective sage. Yes. Yeah, nowadays we see that. Yeah. It's time for us to sleep and wake up early morning. And this is the time when people who are materialistic, they wake up. And they go to nightclubs and stay awake till early morning. Yeah, And then when it's time for a sage to wake up on the early morning, that's the time when they go to sleep. Hmm? Yes, next. Text 70. A person who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enters like rivers into the ocean, which is ever being filled but is always still, can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. Yes. So to enjoy the desires of one's senses is endless. There is no end. It's never ending desires. Today I want this wallet. Next day I want that wallet, that design, this design. The list is endless of the number of dresses and the number of purses and the number of uh, shoes and the number of uh, what else is there? accessories and jewelry that a wife wants. What to do? It's their nature to ask. Yeah. So this verse is especially for them. No, I'm joking. Next. It is for all of us. Yeah. Next yes. seventy-one. A person who has given up all desires for sense gratification who lives free from desires, who has given all senses of proprietorship and is devoted of, and is devoured of false ego, 
he alone can attain real peace. Yes. Why does peace elude us? Because we have so many desires to enjoy. Uh, we feel that this belongs to me, this belongs to me, that belongs to me, everything belongs to me, this is mine, me, mine, I. Yeah, And we have ego. The moment one lets go of all of this, see how peaceful one is. Yeah. Next is the last verse. Text 72. Uh, that is the way of spiritual and godly life. After a attaining which a man is not bewildered. If one is thus situated even at the hour of death, one can enter into the kingdom of God. Yes. So here, text 54 to text 72, Krishna describes Atma Ram. A stands for Atma Ram. Self-satisfied person. How can one become self-satisfied? By rendering devotional service. One pers a person controls his mind. He becomes equipoised. By being equipoised, he doesn't get disturbed by threefold miseries. And he learns the art of controlling one's senses. And how to control one's senses? By engaging the senses in higher taste. Okay? So, the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the acronym is? Gita. 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 Yes, the chapter name is Contents of Gita Summarized. Hence the acronym Gita. The chapter begins with Arjuna being confused, surrendering to Krishna, accepting Krishna as Guru, as a teacher. So G stands for Guru. Then Krishna takes the role of a teacher and shares the foundation of any philosophy, foundation of life is to understand that we are not this body, we are spirit soul. Soul is eternal, soul cannot be perished, soul cannot be drowned, crushed or right. As the body changes, the soul remains the same. Similarly, at the time of that, the soul moves to another body. So the identity of the soul, the characteristics of the soul, Krishna shares. So I stands for identity. What is our true identity? That we are not this body, we are spirit soul. Okay. Then Krishna shares two duties. What are the two duties? Material duties. Uh, duties towards our roles and responsibilities towards our material life or positions that we hold in our life in general. And spiritual duties. That means our own soul. And how one nourishes one's own soul? By rendering devotional service. And Arjuna asks that who is this person? Who and What are the characteristics of this person who does this? Huh? Two duties. That person is called Atmaram. One who attains peace from within. Atma Ram means, Atma means the soul. Ram means pleasure or peace. Atma Ram is one who attains peace from within. He doesn't depend on other people's involvement to get happiness. He is equipoised. Hmm? So that's how this whole chapter ends. Yeah, easy to remember the second chapter? Yeah. Yes. 72 verses beautifully comprised in these four letters, Gita. Guru, identity, two duties, Atma. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions? Anyone wants to share anything? Yes, sir, Radhika. Prabhu, my questions are very normal. They're not very intense and philosophical. You know, when we are attaining to be equanimous and detached, how do we self-judge ourselves that we are detached and we have not become selfish? A person can become selfish and not get bothered. And at the same time, there could be a person who's detached and is in perfect wisdom and is not affected. So how do we differentiate and keep ourselves on track? See, actually, uh, when one is not disturbed by anything that we come across, whether those things happen in our wishful way or whether it does not happen the way we want. If one is not getting disturbed by this and if one thinks that whatever has happened or whatever is happening is by the will of the Lord, then that person is in the right situation. Correct? So, First of all, one should try and practice this kind of thought process. It does not come easily. You know, it's very natural for one, for a person to expect something as a fruits of the results or fruits of action. Yeah. So it comes with practice. And with practice, and how does it come with practice when one associates with people, like-minded people who practice that? So that's when... You know, yes. Why I'm asking is because, mm -hmm. um, interestingly, I had a conversation with my family. Mm -hmm. And I just said, in a sadhu state, I said, you know, whatever is the will of the God will prevail. And mm -hmm. it's everything is happening out of His will. And mm. I said that with a lot of acceptance and surrender. Mm. But the response of the other party in front of me was, you become selfish, itna khudgarsi. Like, mm. you know, like you're not being affected by your pain. And I was not that I'm not affected by someone's pain. It's just that I just said that, be patient, you know, let the Lord's plan unwind. Mm. So, so I also questioned, am I selfish or am I detached? No, so so first and foremost, we should not get disturbed by other people's comments. If your intent is not pure. So first and foremost, self-evaluate if your intention is pure. If your intention is pure, it doesn't matter if that other person gets disturbed or gets comments or names anything. See, one thing one should learn is that one should never get disturbed by what other people say or comment. If one's intention is pure and one should be able to communicate the intention also correctly. Otherwise, they will also misunderstand. So, first and foremost, whenever anyone helps, you see everyone goes through different situations and everyone perceives that situation in a different way. One may expect you to be very sensitive about their needs. Right? And you may think that this is normal. There's nothing wrong in this. So sometimes we also have to understand what is their needs. You know, there's a beautiful book called The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. There's another book that you should all read it. If you don't have the book, let me know. The book called Gary, uh, uh, the book is called The Five Love Languages. Every couple has to read it. You cannot escape this, by the way. If you are a couple, if you have a partner, you have to read. Both of them have to read. You will really understand each other by reading this book. It's called The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Some people, they love gifts. 
and some people are least bothered about gifts they want attention some people they are not bothered about gifts they don't want bother about attention they like phys- they like physical intimacy they like physical presence so are you able to understand your partner are you able to understand your relatives perfectly this book will help you analyze that and when you analyze that you give that need thank you and when you do that all problems are solved yes thank you um i know gita is a manual for all the yogis and yoga means unity with the lord and as you give the example that you know we are like uh, gold dust mm. and the spoon is like the gold bar mm. my little question which actually is not really a question but i just want to get some clarity why are we seeking to get united with the lord when we know that a part of him is already within us like uh, you mm. know our soul has a part of like you know like mm. this entire uh, this entire endeavor for liberation and getting to the gold bar we are also like a dust particle he also he's already sitting here mm. why are striving to do this yes what is the purpose of re- reuniting with him because we don't realize that we are suffering a person who is in jail and lives there for many years start thinking that this is how life is i don't know if you've seen this movie called shawshank redemption have you seen this movie yes it's the it's the number one movie forever for all times the number one movie in the world is shawshank redemption second is godfather yeah so i'm not talking about godfather i'm talking about shawshank redemption if you see this movie you will notice that how this okay i don't want to share what's the there in the movie but a person who is jailed they start thinking that this lifestyle living in the jail is what they are meant for this is what gives them happiness but when reality hits them birth old age disease death miseries caused by mind and senses misery is caused by other living being misery is caused by natural calamities when it hits them then they realize that i don't want to live in this then where should i live go reunite back to spiritual world that's where you are supposed to live yeah so this world is called dukkhalayam it's managed by a personality called durga why she is called durga because she is the one who controls the durg durg means jail and one who controls the jail is called jailer or durga that's why she is got the name durga this further proves that this world this creation this material world is dukkhalayam place of misery <laughs> yeah hence it is very much important for one to understand that this is not the place for happiness and if this is not the place for happiness where is the place it's back in the spiritual world vaikuntha place of no miseries and that should be our goal of life if one thinks no i am happy within my old small sweet cell my world my car my family my money my wealth my friends i'm happy okay sometimes i have some problems but i'm happy but that's how a person who is living in a jail for 10 15 years thinks that i'm happy i have my set of people i have my set of the routine i have my food that i get from the government it's a set of routine that he becomes addicted to he forgets that no this is not the place for a com- common man to live 
you know that's why that's why it's important to not think like we are part of dust yeah it's important for us to join back to the gold bar where normal people live three fourth of the whole creation lives in vaikuntha one fourth is us in this book beautiful questions thank you thank I you thank you anmo you have one more question I'm good. Thank you. Thank so, you. Yes. Anyone else? Uh, Rinamji, just a small uh, query. Uh, okay. Uh, you have said it uh, many times that this is uh, Dukhalaya and uh, here people cannot have the ultimate happiness. And, but the uh, the like uh, like misery or the sadness is also not equally distributed among everyone like for example uh, we know god wants the best for everyone and mm. he wants he wishes well for everyone then why is it so that people the the i mean the like suffering of some people knows mm. no bound where we think that why have they taken birth in the first place for example someone is born totally uh, disabled mm. for from birth to death they are dependent on someone even for eating or maybe anything or maybe for someone where they in a country where there is a, 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 a like war going on and they are killed because of the mistake of someone else mm. so what is their fault so mm. in, in that matter does God not uh, wish well for them or yes Yes. Some miseries the, are such that it is better mm, not to take. Mm. See, if there is anyone who is a well-wisher, no one can replace the position of the Supreme Lord being the well-wisher of every living being. There is no doubt about it. The Supreme Lord is the well-wisher of every living being, whether you believe Him or not. Whether you believe in Him or not, He still takes care of everything. If at all anyone is going through suffering, if at all anyone is born in a way where his whole life he is going to suffer, if he, at all anyone is born in a situation where there is suffering entirely because of war, natural calamities or whatever, it is all because of karma. And karma is so complicated that it is very difficult to judge anyone. One cannot throw this word karma on a person who is suffering. One cannot. But through knowledge one can just understand and help and support as much as we can. So someone is born disabled does not mean that we think that oh it's his karma what to do. Let him suffer. We should from our side try and help that person as much as we can. That is our duty. That person suffering that is his karma. What can we do? You cannot take the suffering of your own family member. Forget about others. Isn't it? If you are having a good health and one of your family member is suffering because of some disease or something, you cannot do anything. He is in pain. She is in pain. But you cannot take that pain. All you can do is pray for them. Or help them in whatever way you can. Emotionally, financially, spiritually, whatever way you can do, you can help them. So why there is suffering? It is because of the karma. And hence the importance of taking up Krishna consciousness seriously. Yeah, it is it is not that. The Supreme Lord is biased towards certain people, certain castes, certain creed. 
There's a reason where a person is born in certain way because of his previous life's karma. Not only previous life, previous lifetime's karma. Right? Did I share you the story of Dhritarashtra? See, imagine that Dhritarashtra, so. right? He was the king who was born blind. Right? And as a father, in front of, in, in his presence, all his hundred sons died. Can you imagine what a dilemma it is? What a situation he was in? He's a blind king. On top of that, in his presence, all his hundred sons died. So he asks Krishna after the Mahabharat war. But Krishna, why did this happen? Why I had to go through this misery? That I was, first of all, I was not only born blind, on top of that, all my hundred sons died even before me. For a father, it's such a shock, no? For the son to die in his presence. Imagine all the hundred sons dying. Then Krishna tells him, that ji, hundred lifetimes before you were a hunter. And at that time you were being chased by a tiger and you climbed a tree and the tiger was waiting for you down. And because you were hungry, you thought you will eat the eggs that were there in front of you on the branch of a bird. Hundred eggs of the bird. And you were about to you know, cook those eggs and eat. And the mother bird came. And when the mother bird came, you took the branch stick and you poked the eyes of the mother bird. And you killed her. And then you consumed all the hundred eggs in the presence of the mother bird. So Dhritarashtra asks, if all of this I did hundred lifetimes before, why am I suffering in this birth after hundred lifetimes, after hundred births? Why am I suffering now? So Krishna replies that to get one son, you had to do the pious activities to get the karma to gain one son. In each lifetime, you gain the karma, good karma. You did good karma to get one son. So you had to wait for all the good karmas of getting and accumulate that good karma so that this lifetime you get all hundred sons together. And, and you are punished. And then he got punished for what he did hundred lifetimes before. You understood? So how karma works we don't know. Someone might be born in the war zone. Someone might be born in a happy beautiful country but he might be crippled. We don't know why. What that person might have done in his previous birth, we don't know. But from our side, we should show compassion. We should show love. We should show kindness. We should take care of them. That is our duty. Yeah. Okay. So that's the teachings yeah, of okay. Sadhana. Hmm? Yeah. Thank you. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much for beautiful questions and because of which I was able to share whatever little I know and whatever little I have learned. But it's really beautiful to come together and read together. That's what gives me more and more joy every Thursday. You know, I look forward for Thursdays. Yes. Yeah. And I that's hope... I hope you all share the same feeling.
Yeah. Absolutely. Just really thank you. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Good. Thank you, Harinamji. Good evening. Good day to all of you. This Saturday we have kids and day after tomorrow. Happy anniversary, Kirtan Dubai. Yes, Kirtan Dubai anniversary we have. Those of you who want to join, oh, wow. please message me. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.